uh, refresh the page. Close all your other stuff. Like close your high screen and blah blah. blah. By the way, can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly fine. Oh, we did it, friends. Did we actually do it? Alright. I think we did it. Alright. Did we okay. actually do okay. it? Yeah, yeah, let's post this on the Facebook page. Hold on. Okay. Alright, stop. Uh, you can stop sharing screen. Okay. Oh, we did it, friends. Did we actually do it? I need you to cl close your stream on the just close your stream on the on the stream. Uh, yes. Right. Close, close the stream. Close the stream. Okay, and then just full screen this or whatever. Should I put in headphones so I can't? Oh wait, no. You want to hear? You want to be? Yeah, there, but you, you have, have to. to you have, have to close, close your stream. stream. Close the stream on the. I did. Okay. Sorry, Sorry I'm watching on a delay. All right. Hold up, I'm checking if it's. We did it. We did it. <laughs> All right, hold up. Uh, I am going to. Okay. So. Who are the two teams? Because I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so... First of all, I've got to post this to the Facebook page. Yo, this was so last minute. <laughs> yeah, no, give me a second. Okay. Well, fortunately, I've watched a lot of streams, so maybe I have. I think I have an idea of how to do this. So it's going right now. All right, hold on. All right, I just posted on the Facebook page. No, don't do manual, do um, automatic so that we get to the school watching the same thing, okay? Okay. It's on directed right now, yeah. Um, how do I get yeah, rid of this, uh, this, all this, uh, these icons? Wait, are you in game? Yeah, I'm in game, I'm watching right now. Okay, you're gonna have to actually change your OBS settings. Alright, how do I do that? So, try to do gate, uh, go back to sources, go to game, and uh, add sources, and then do game capture. Go to game, or add sources, and then do game capture. Add sources. Okay, so you just make your the button. Then they. It's not showing anything. back. It's not showing anything. All right, just um, just go to just do uh, make your legal buttons window right now. Yeah. Just, uh, do you see anything? Well, we just missed like the first two kills of the game, so that's good. That's great. Yo, just just uh, make it win up right now. Alright. Uh, okay, so it's getting game capture. It's working. Alright, we're good. We're good. Alright, we're, we're good. Alright, so. So we missed the first two kills of the game, but that's fine. So on the red team, they lost. They, they got a kill onto the, onto the Nautilus. Hey mom, I'm doing something for the collegiate tournament. Okay, sorry. So I guess I can't do this anymore. Wait, you you can uh, stream the game? It's just like they they like called me up last minute saying I had to do this. Okay. Alright, so let's just start uh, doing this and get this done with. Alright, so let's do a little bit of team introduction. We are watching Rome occasionally versus uh, the Dawn Squad. Uh, so, as you can see, we have a little bit of an early advantage for We Rome occasionally, or sorry, rather for Dawn Squad. We got two early kills, both onto their Sivir, which is actually very big. Yeah, that's, uh, that, but they got Lucian, so that bounces it out a little bit. They got one into Lucian on the blue side. All right, so, so we have a pause. This is actually great because now we can uh, we can run down the lineup. Talk a little bit. Yeah. Let's run down. So. Line. Yeah. Yep. So on the blue so team. So on the blue side. Okay, you go. 
Yeah. So on the blue side, we have um, the We Roam Occasionally team uh, with Mahir um, and a bunch of other kids, along with their captain, Tony. Um, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, how about, I'll, 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 I have an idea of like, how I want to do that. So um, okay. on the purple side, we have um, Azen Sexy on the Irelia. We have uh, Sorzen Dinix on the Sejuani. We have JJ Brosandigi on the Sivir, and we have Kaizen Warrior on the Morgana, and we have Yurkarn's Fury on the Annie. And you can say who's on the blue side. Yeah, on the blue side we have Fabrics um, on Nautilus, Western Knight on Shivana, We Roam on Gragas, Samus Moors on Lucian, and Huey and Kyoma on Echo. It's, a, it's worth noting that We Roam. Um, Tony May is actually on jungle instead of his customary mid, where he's done really well lately. So we'll have to see how that adjustment pays off for them. What do you think of both of these lineups? How do you think that they match up against each other? So, uh, blue side has a or rather purple side has a definite team fight composition. Um, with their Sivir, Aurelia, and well, Sivir, Annie, and Sejuani are all very powerful team fight composition champions. Uh, whereas uh, blue team has a more pick focus composition with their Nautilus, their Gragas, and their Echo. So, uh, th their team fight isn't shabby by any means, but it's definitely not as strong. So, we'll also see how that develops. They well. don't seem to have much um, early pressure on the purple side. Like, they have the Tuani jungle, which, um, as I found in my game, is not the best early runner, given that I gave up first blood in that game. Um, I think that we're going to see that. The Echo is going to go largely unpunished this game. Um, getting very little like, not being, like, that game, compared to like, something like a or an Ari. Yep. And we're just going to see Hugh and uh, Kyoma just like dominate this game. Yeah, um... Yeah, that's said, though, Annie does have a very strong new game. So, as long as he can get off good roams on the top side, he might be able to do a lot of work as well. Oh, uh, Western Knight getting off some really good trades up here top lane. CS is even, but if you see the HP bars, Western Knight is way, it is like, with, just came out of a big range up there. Um, he ha the bot lane seems to be going very static, both sides getting very equal farm. That's to be expected with the Morgana sword. just completely shut it down. But I didn't oh, but there's there's a big good binding. Yep. That is one of the weaknesses of Nautilus support is uh, that he can't really cancel out that range focus. So both on uh, top side, maybe you got it looking for some action. So Juani boarding, but just gonna walk away. So no He's action. Kinda, I actually so Juani seems to just be. Um, I don't think the Juani's gonna actually get anything off unless. Yeah, I don't think the Juani's gonna get anything here. He seems to uh, be running back and forth, off. but we, we Rome, I think, might actually get something off of there. No, they're not going to take the two beats here. Yeah. Uh, actually, so the push that Gregus walked into is supported, so actually he's not going to want to take the two beats. Oh, it looks like he's going to get first, gotta get the well, not first blood, but first blood in the lane phase. Yeah, nice solo kill. Um, yeah, they go oh, three stacks. Oh, making the big jungle pressure place. Yeah, that actually opens up um, your side to take some control over the map. That is one of the weaknesses of Sidwani. She is not the best crapper in the jungle engagement. And Greg is smiting away that, uh, smiting away the the Raptor jump for a nice set of time. So that's a nice experience. Uh, Sidwani, still. Real quick so, this so I can actually hear you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so go ahead, what were you saying? Uh, no, so Gregus does actually have a pretty significant level advantage on the Sejuani. Uh, he's been level 4 for almost a full minute, where Sejuani just got 4. So we'll see if he can capitalize on this. That is part of the purple smite's advantage. It does give you a faster clear time than uh, going blue smite. Yep, so for example, now Gregus is level 5, where Sejuani just hit level 4. Uh, and Gregus is looking for a gank off the mid. The stun doesn't hit, and but the flash. And the flash as well. That will good reaction. Yes, but in the future, we Rome is gonna get off some big ganks on her because I do not believe we Rome is gonna 
flash, and that is flash down on the end. And you know that flash here. Oh, fight is breaking out. A bot lane, so Bonnie's coming in for the gang. Bonnie's here for the gang. Alright, is she gonna get the, if you guys get the W off? And double lock up. And now the and the binding. And is that ever dead? And that's ever dead. Going to the Sidwani. That's a big kill for that side. Sidwani is really struggling to run it. But now she's gonna get her six at a much faster pace. Yeah, the double knockup really important right there. Uh, Ignite also burned up the Sibyl, so Blue Side's going to have a very weak landing phase for the next couple of minutes. Especially if Gun Lucian's going to want to have his power spike at BF. I'm a little uh, surprised that uh, that Purple Side is backing here, considering that uh, they had a super there. They could have shoved him into the turret, I think, and then back. Uh, no. Sibyl was still low, and without um, Gragas. Oh yeah, Gragas, the they did not see Gragas in the map, so they might have been worried that he was coming. Yeah. Um, Lester Knight had a this. full level advantage now. On Asian yeah, sector. but let's take a look at uh, where we're standing right now. Actually, despite um, the big solo lane advantages, Triple Sight is actually up 800 gold. Um, and that's largely not largely due to the kills either. Um, there's a CS really big room from Evelyn. Really, really big. Just snowballing that Echo, and Echo is one of the most one of the best person people taking over. You see, Echo is going for um, what build is he going for now with that Amp Tome? So the Amp Tome, well, the standard uh, Echo build these days is Morello's into Ludens. We'll have to see what Huey and Kyoma is looking to it do. It looks like he's going uh -huh. for Ludens. I do not think that. Oh wait, no, Amp Tome does. Good. I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah. Um, looking to contest the dragon. So Aurelia's actually Oops. in a pretty bad spot here. She's completely out of mana and she's gonna get shoved in. She might have to blow her TP just to get back to the lane. Uh, despite this though, Aurelia is maintaining a 10 CF advantage in her lane despite being bad. Oh, fight a dragon. Stun goes off. And Ludens probably going to die here. Come on, he's being in, and she's coming in with a big fight, and she gets the wow. kill off. Wow, one kill. She gets the kill off. There. They're going to continue chasing. That's it. So far, a 2v2, 2v1, and oh, it's going to become a 3v1. Big kill, Lucian. going to the Annie. Oh, that's that's scary for the Lucian. <laughs> yeah, so blue side gets the dragon, but they lose a 3v1 trade. Um, at this point, probably not worth it. First dragon is not worth that much. Uh, Annie coming in with a nice stun on the Gragas was enough to turn that fight. They took too much uh, damage from the dragon, didn't have enough vision control on the bottom side as you can see. No wards on the bottom oh, side. Oh, very close finding the Morgana. Kaizen Warrior playing out of the game. Just landing yeah. out, like findings and making plays happen. Yeah, but if you look at the dragon area, there's only red side wards on the bottom side. That's why uh, red was able to get a nice flank from the bottom side and cut off that dragon fight, win that fight two for, uh, 3 for 1. Uh, and that's bringing red side actually to a 3k gold advantage, a 2k gold advantage. What does blue side have to do here to really turn this game around considering that they are... I mean, they're not at a huge disadvantage, but if the game keeps going at this pace, they're going to like be in a bad spot eventually. Yeah, let's just um, like let's evaluate rather where the strengths are on each team right now. Right now on the blue side, uh, basically it's just Echo who's ahead, but even he's died twice due to some over-aggressive plays and that dragon fight. Whereas on red side, you have an extremely strong Aurelia. Um, despite being behind on levels, he's actually 20 CS up, uh, rather 15 uh, CS up on the Shivana. Um, and she scales better into the late game than the Shivana. Also, uh, Sivir's at 4-0 compared to the 1-0 evolution. So she's also a major power player. Uh, I feel that Aurelia and uh, Sivir having strength on two sides of the map is probably going to be considerably stronger than Echo's influence unless he starts getting off really good roams. I think what really needs to happen here is we roam really needs to make like a big play somewhere on this map right now. Because I've I felt some of his presence on this map, but they haven't really felt like they've transitioned into big kills yet. Exactly, and I think that um, that partly speaks to his inexperience as a jungler. He's generally a mid laner main. Um, and so while he is exerting a lot of pressure on the Sejuani, staying a level ahead still, staying some farm ahead, he hasn't really uh, gotten off effective ganks, whereas Sejuani got the effective gank on bot lane, she had an effective by the dragon. So that's, oh, big that's fight really happening fun. top lane. Uh, but and now we're fighting down to top lane, but I'm probably gonna die oh. here. 
Wow, exactly. that's really a big nice kill. Stacks. And that gets the double buffs onto Q and Kiyoma, um, who's and actually that... going to continue snowballing this lead. And double buffs are actually amazing right now, because like, you can really stick up with someone making the red buff. And by like, breaking out here, so, and, and Annie lives, that's very surprising. The and he's going to get the kill! Oh my out. god, he got the kill! An aggressive play from... I'm here and going a little bit too deep is going to cost him. And I was just saying that like double buffs are actually incredible on Echo. If you get the red buff slow and you can consistently apply that, and the blue buff keeps you full mana, and Echo actually does have mana issues. So losing those double buffs is a huge swing to the favor of the red side. And they work almost just as well on any though. The full out reduction is extremely useful for their low CD spells. And um, the red buff with her ranged auto attack is going to be pretty useful in chasing down targets if she wants to get in a fight. Um, still getting a huge It's a rally. She's still kind of stays sustained back up. <laughs> yeah, she and might be losing the trades, but she's here. winning um, her CS, like the CS battle, extremely well. So uh, she is, actually does have a pretty significant gold advantage over the Shivana in general. Um, and she'll be able to transition that better. So uh, safe warding. So since transitioning to the next dragon fight, what do you think that East side needs to do to set up her? Uh, basically, I think that Gragas has to make a pick before that dragon fight because there's no way that you can guess, uh, contest a strong Sejuani Annie sitter on a mid-game dragon fight. Honestly, I would say that Blue, Blue might even need to just give up the next dragon. Uh, oh, given the disadvantage, given the Once again, a big, uh, a big play on the Morgana, but... Oh! Is he gonna get the big bolt on both of them? Oh, wait, that's a <laughs> Now this goes really low on the bot side. TP comes in from purple. A really nice man, two, two man Sejuani ult. But the Spirelia unfortunate gets... thing is that this is a minute before Dragon comes up, so they can't actually make a play off of that. Unless... Yuma dies here? Did you Yuma die here? Oh, oh, barely lit. Done misses. And then Ultimate gets hits. The blue smite. I think there's. I think that that's actually not too bad for blue side there because Shivana is going to get top tower off of that. Red team's turret has been destroyed. Yeah, but it looks like they're probably going to get two tower, uh, the mid tower, and possibly the dragon. A uh, dragon up in 37 seconds. Uh, hot lane's pushing. They're going to lose wave on bottom. They do not have an AD there. Yep. No. So mid turret's about to go down, and they are they going to transition this into a dragon? Mid turret. So they, 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 they stopped that. They didn't have an ADC there. So nice. they, they actually defend, did not get the tower very fast. So Johnny's low. They might not be able to get their dragon yet, but they do have vision control. If you look at the dragon area, there's no blue side wards. Uh, two red side wards. Is, so. Are there any blue side wards on the map? Yeah, actually none. Uh, they've all been cleared. One, only one king for it on the side of uh, purple, so that actually means it's a Lego. It's not really purple doing a great job of clearing vision so much as blue just lacking it. So we'll have to see how that works out. Uh, bot side is pushing in favor of blue at the moment, that was so actually, it does have to deal with that. But. These last couple these last of minutes have actually been amazing for blue side. They got top turret, and it looks like they're going to get bot turret as well, and they didn't even read mid turret. Yeah, I'm missing. Uh, Sivir goes in for the ultimate. Will she be able to catch the Lucian? Yeah, oh, comes Lucian in. Aurelia is dead. Lucian is dead. Yeah, Lucian is gone, and that's going to transition easily into the uh, dragon. And actually, mid lane probably shortly to follow, possibly. So Lester Knight's there's going to be a fight here. Pushing. There's does no he response TP on the yet? top side. Yes, he does. Yep. So they have TP advantage. They might, they might be able to make a play. Here. Lester Knight uh, hitting top. Dragon's going to go down to contest it. Is he going to take top Awesome. Alright, so one to one dragon, but top tower is going to go down. And like I was saying, uh, or like like the, the event stack that might be emerging for Purple that evaporates as the two top towers go down and the bot side. So, really good job by Shibana by continuing the pressure up top. Aurelia putting good pressure on the map, but not transitioning to CS advantage. And now he's actually fallen behind, so uh, the solo lanes that I thought were going to be winning for Purple are actually in a pretty bad position. It really seems like blue side is just out rotating uh, red side here. Like they, yeah, they, I, in, in the past couple minutes, they have gotten three turrets with zero response. Exactly, but unfortunately, even with a three turret disadvantage, blue is actually um, 
only breaking even with Pickle. That means that these outer turrets, which are all extremely low on the side of uh, on the side of blue, where is this advantage? Uh, fight on bottom side, but nothing actually results of it. But like as I'm saying, um, these three outer turrets from blue are actually likely to go down soon, and if they don't, um, and if they do go down, it's going to turn into a three to four k advantage for uh, purple. So blue needs to take the lead that they have, or the slight, you know, like, evenness that they have right now, and they need to convert it into kills fast before their outer turrets can go down. Well, Irelia did just finish her Trinity Force, so maybe they can make a push off with that. Really even game, actually. Uh, we need to see how fast, basically, Purple can push down these bottom two turrets. Like, the they have the answers to this Shivana. They have a Morgana, they have an Irelia, they have a Sidwani, they really have an Annie. Like, they should be able to get picks on her. See, Silver actually not opting to go for this bottom turret. It's gonna cost, possibly cost Purple. Alright, she's gonna go for it, and as you can see now, Purple, I mean Purple, swinging out to a seven, seven hundred gold lead. Uh, mid flame, maybe shortly to follow. Uh, and like I was saying, we were talking about you know comps earlier in the game, or at the beginning rather, and we were saying that Red Side has an extremely strong team fight. Um, but that blue side has really good tendency for picks and split push, and you can see that developing here, three turrets to one, whereas blue set, purple side has a lot of kills. Um, so that actually speaks sort of to the strength of both of these compositions. What do you think of transitioning Shivana to the bot side to split push there, and then transitioning the rest of the steam to the top side? Because it does not seem like she's going to get a base turret off of this split push. Uh, I think that would not be a bad idea. Uh, Oh, well, team fight breaking yeah, out because all that for a second. Team fight coming out with really big damage. Wait, what's happening? goes off. Teleport's gonna not get cancelled. Are they gonna really get this goal? Some, some hits. Morganos. I think Warrior is dead. Dead. Windsor dies. Green has a 20 ultimate, but I'm not sure if there's enough follow up. Aurelia goes low. The Gragas is engaged, but actually is looking against the ship. so low right now. Slivers on this Shivana right now. And the that Gragas ultimate actually prevented Blue Side from getting what looks like maybe two to three even kills by knocking away both the low Irelia and the Annie. So a really kind of unfortunate fight for Blue. Very they messy. do trade one for one, but it could have been so much better for them. Credit right to the Sidwani though, landing a three man ult there. Like that was that was pretty big. I feel like three man ult but under tower, not able to follow up with the low range team of Purple. Purple does have um, a strong t AoE team fight, but Annie, Sivir, and uh, and Aurelia all, you know, very like short range to heal each other. Yeah, so the team side four turrets to one, getting a uh, getting a nice like they're even now, so we'll have to see. Team fights are still going the way. TP comes in, but they're not gonna be able to catch anybody here, definitely not. Uh, they're gonna try to get this mid tower. Mid tower goes down and now purple's back in a very slight lead. That's a, that's a uh, that's a big power to take down. That opens up a lot of rooms for roaming on the map. Yep. Um, and now, he's like breaking up. The Mokana shield plate is not gaining everything they can. Wow. Echo just getting melted by that Annie. That's actually that's actually pretty sick. Putting a Morgana shield on that Irelia. It's pretty yep. terrifying. Purple actually taking the time to push out the bottom wave. And so actually, this, uh, uh, this dragon coming up in a minute 30, as long as they can push out the top side, will be in a good position for the red team. We'll have to see how that develops. Uh, Blue side finally getting a little a little bit more control of the warding game, but even so... Uh, it, just, it just feels like they, they're blind. Like, yep. they, they have Purple nothing. Purple side again, complete control over the dragon area. Only one ward in that little, like, the pixie board, like the pixie brush. So, we'll have to see. Topside also pushing for red purple, so they have all the ingredients they need to set up this dragon well. It's coming up in one minute. There's no way that blue can actually push out to reclaim vision on the dragon without, uh, you know, some mispositioning from red. See red defending their vision really well. Uh, Shivana back on the split push at top, so that will prevent the uh, the push from becoming an issue. The Wee Realm does have some initiation potential, having a righteous glory up. Oh, the double Sidwani oh. ultimate. Lucian actually dashing into that one. And you're seeing the team fight power of... Oh. You're seeing the team fight power of Cripple Side come into play. They're standing on top of the Echo, but he's not going to want to go in 1v4. 
I mean, he has me here, but he's not that ball. And the Morgana is, just seems like such a good pickup against against. I try to walk in into, and he's gonna just sneakily juke out. Will he be able to get the zipper here? And he's just going to. It seems like yeah, blue, uh, yeah. Blue side should just yeah. Purple side, red. I mean sorry, red side should just back off. Do dragon. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Dragon's up now. And they're completely in control. There's no way. Jungle is not even close. There's a very very small possibility. Echo gets jumped onto by the Aurelia, and he's just. These are, these are actually really good plays by you know, like, yeah. Fortunately, Annie was actually in the top. Oh, oh, used by the Echo, and now there's no way to contest that dragon. So, two dragons to one, three K gold lead for the purple side. And as I was saying, you know, purple, after they managed to get down these towers and just take another good team fight, it's slowly snowballing even closer, harder into their favor. And, and we're not even. We're not even at Baron yet, but when the Baron fights start to break out, it, I, I don't really know how Blue Side engages into that. Yep. We're really going to be clearing out the top side. Uh, Shivana with no teleport also meant that she wasn't able to help in that engage where they got engaged on by the Sijuani. And I just feel like without the vision control that they need, you know, Blue's just going to keep getting caught out by this, you know, by the Sijuani any like, composition. They need to really regain control. They're going for the right story off this Annie. Alternate blow by Shivana, they get the hook, and she's probably going to go down. She's coming, but she's not going to be Almost gets the Lucian, but the heal saves him. Wow, look at that. 150 HP left. That heal was extremely important. Uh, Red's going to take this time to push out their side waves. That kill is good, but the, you can't really get anything off of it with both the dragon down, and you've taken almost every outer tier turret. So, uh, you sort of like to talk about you know potential gold on the map, right? So at this point, actually, Purple Team has taken a lot of the potential gold on the map. They've taken four of these towers, whereas Blue Team ahead 2k, and they still have, uh, you know, two or three towers, one outer turret. The amazing uh, thing is that they still have both of their turrets up on top of them. That actually yeah. gives them like, pretty good Baron control by just giving them like turrets to fall back on if a fight breaks out. Yeah, but if Red Team, you know, converges onto that top lane, you know, Blue is not going to be able to team fight over it, and it should uh, react, respond, it should result, rather, into another tower for Red Team, bringing them probably even 3k to 4k ahead of the board. Uh, Shivana going to keep pushing out uh, the top wave, though, and with Aurelia actually spending so much of her time with Blue with the team, you know, not exerting as much pressure on the map as the Shivana. The, you know, the, 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 the downside to this is she has a much higher kill participation. So it seems like, uh, so what What do you think about the item pickups that people are going for, with Morgana going for Righteous Glory and uh, uh, Frost Queen's Claim? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's actually, actually a very interesting build. It actually makes the ultimate more effective, and it enhances the strengths of the Sivir composition. First, let's look at this mid push though. Oh, big catch oh. by Annie there. Annie's done. He, you and Kyoto ultimate comes out, but really, really low, and they take out every. Oh, Morgana, stun has not missed. Lucian, stun hits, and they get. If you and Kyoma die, is the Juani ult just to make sure that he dies there. And after the dust fades, it's a 3 for 3. Um, actually, you know, very good for Blue Team given their. Very the surprised that Red Team did not come out more ahead there. Yeah, the Sejuani was actually split trying to deal with the Shivana's push in the top lane. Um, she was pushing out those minions, so she wasn't actually around for the fight. So an important part of their team fight composition not there. And there's no way they're gonna be able to push these towers with two melees versus the Lucian. And the wave through with the dragons. So they should back off here. I feel like this was actually a oh, no, they did get the boards done. Hmm. So what do you think uh, teams, the teams are going to start uh, working towards now? Do you think they're going to start setting up for Baron, start setting up for another Dragon, or setting up for a push, or just farming out? Um, I think that at, at, for Purple Team, the important thing is to keep their sideways push to deal with the Shibana pressure. Uh, and then Blue Team needs to be looking aggressive to the picks that their comp is able to set up. Uh, if you take a look at some of the items on each side, uh, in the top lane, uh, Aurelia's Triforce is going to make her about as effective as the AoE of 
from the Shivana. Uh, two side contesting. Kukuma making, making a, his signature aggressive plays. Yep, and he he's not rewarded with the blue buff for his troubles though. That does go over to the Gragas, so actually they did manage to steal the buff. Pretty good versus the Annie. Like I said, cooldown reduction is fairly important on him. Um, and, you know, both sideways still pushing into red, so... Have a interesting thing to point out that just happened, Morgana was standing on a pink ward and clearing it, and there were three people around her, and they just could not engage on her. They really do not have a way to engage on the black shield on their team. I really are clearing out top wave. I really think that purple needs to be devoting more resources to the top side of this map in order to get that, um, you know, that tier one tower top, get that guaranteed gold. But with Dragon coming up in 39 minutes, 39 seconds rather, they're not going to really do that. Actually, this time finally, purple ha blue has what is a set looks like a semblance of war on uh, the Dragon area. So finally, they'll actually be able to take an even contest. We'll see how that goes. Sejuani and Sivir running down now 20 seconds before, so they have a good timing. But blue team sort of in the area first. But looking for a collapse, maybe onto the mid lane. You can see so much how much um, control now. So despite their lack of warding early, uh, the constant pressure that Shivana is putting, you know, they're actually basically doing a 1-3-1. And you can see in their vision, uh, blue team actually has a pretty good control of the map. They have said, very deep wards down into their dragon. Yeah, unfortunately though, they actually give up the positioning on dragon right as it spawns, so they're going to be coming from the outside. We'll see if Echo can get a good flank. Oh, really attacking straight up the phone. Yeah. Oh, and even the two man stun hits him. Echo gets a big stun the 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 and the one of the Shivana there. Oh. Oh. I really can't team up, and they just, have, they just have so much damage and control on the red side that it just seems like they can't control them. Yep, the AoE from uh, red side just too much, and they're gonna get a four for one. Over they don't that even need to go for dragon here; they can just push down mid. Yeah, and it, you can see again, blue side actually having control of the map. Like I said, they had their waves pushing, they had everything set up, and then they leave the dragon area for red side. Do you think this is just? Do you think this is an out draft? Like it, it really seems like it can't fight into their composition. I mean, I think. Given for the like the style of UPS I play, it might be an outdraft. Echo, he's getting a lot of damage done on this Aurelia, but just locked up too much, and he's gonna go down. Yep. I think for the UPSL playstyle, this is definitely an outdraft. UPSL is based on, you know, explosive team fights. Uh, and so like a split push composition or like a take position is not going to work so well in the team where you know, all five members not be, might be on the same page and so it's slow though. Possible that they get something on this dragon. Calling coming in, but I don't think it's kind of off them. I think they're supposed to be going to go for it. Yeah, the vibe's still here. That's the move that got this go to red. It's really actually quite big for this composition. Based around yep, the sliver. Yep, 4k gold lead emerges for a red side, man. I think Sivir is actually like. Such a highly contested pick in this league, you know. She's so easy to play, she works in every composition. And she, she just upscales so many carries with the W reset. Yep. And with like UPSL's style being so teamfight oriented, I think that. Oh, it's on it for us, Yeah. Yep. That is just, blown that up is by that what happens with Annie and ADC. If you get too close to Annie, you will kill you instantly. Hmm. I think it's worth noting that actually Dong Squad showing, you know, impressive new form, and that is due to. Their Sivir, being a new player, uh, or you know, uh, not a new addition exactly, but he was out of out of commission for the first couple of games. He's showing up really big this game at a 5-2-13 scoreline, extremely crazy KDA. Surviving so well against an Echo and a Shibana. Aurelia taking damage, but they're not going to be able to finish her off. She's so tanky with that Frozen Heart. It seems like uh, Red Side is trying to take control of the area around the Baron pit. Maybe they're setting up for a Baron pit. I think the main thing that I just like about this blue side draft is that, um, you know, that they take the Lucia. Uh, just not enough damage to burst through this Sejuani Aurelia. Shimana goes in, but not gonna get anything done. I, I, always, I feel like Lucian is just very low range for most ADCs, but it's it's, it's like picking a vein, but you just have so much less damage. 
Lucian basically only fits into extreme mid mid game snowball climbs. Or Wait, did, did you see the culling that Lucian just threw out there? No, I didn't. He but just they... threw it backwards into his base. Oh, nice. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah, as like as I was saying, though, Lucian having a lot of trouble because he's basically good in two compositions: a mid game focused stop composition, or a composition that looks to buff him up late game, like with a Lulu or something, so that he can stay relevant. But wouldn't you just prefer to have a Kogma or something like that there? Um, yeah, but at the same time, by clicking the Kogma, you do lose uh, a lot of a lot of mid game control, where Lucian provides the mid game control, and the Lulu can keep him relevant. Uh, and Lulu herself just like a strong pick in many compositions with a strong front line. You can put your P on, but let's look at the Baron going on. The red side has not cleared out many of these words, so this is going to be Both side lanes pushing into purple, so it's actually kind of hard for them to do this Baron without losing like constantly the bottom side taking damage from minions. Oh, the fight breaks out now, Huge Killer is not there, not going to go well. 4v5. It's yep. a massacre. It seems that they're just gonna get Baron for free. Yep, they're going to get Baron, so while Blue does have the uh, you know the control of the side waves, which they've had almost, almost all game, they haven't played well around it, they haven't been able to convert the side waves and draw, they're just more patient, you know, they wait a little bit longer until Blue has to a much more difficult composition to execute. Yeah, but I think, like, for example, you see how much the top side is actually pressuring right now. If Luke's not actually just waiting uh, until someone has to go to respond, you and Jimmy going in, not going to be able to catch the Sivir though. He ultimates out to safety. But like I'm saying though, if you see now Sivir has to go respond to this top wave, or, then, you know, in a different game. Oh, and is Lucian just going to get insta here? Yes, he does by the Annie. But yeah, it's like I was saying though, if uh, Purple Blue Team had just waited, uh, you know, like one minute, two minutes while their side wings are pushing, then they can go get vision control uncontested, but instead they just keep walking in without vision control and, and they just get caught. And so I think the new side needs to work on if they're going to play a composition based on, you know, pushing side waves and keeping control of the map. They need to work on having better awareness of, you know, where, where their pressure is instead something of walking in. Something to know is that outside of the Nautilus, there is actually not that much uh, hard CC on the blue side. They only really have the Echo Stun. Oh, it's a pink pipe breaking out, and no, it's just going to be maybe we run one here. Yes, we will. Dragon's going to take a little bit of time. Oh, wait, what? Nice escape. Not escape. Yeah. Drax is strong, but not that strong. It's against a team that's 10k ahead. That's one, and finally this outer tower going to go down on blue. Honestly, I think that... Uh, I agree with what you were saying before. I think that the only way that blue is actually back into the game is just they make a very big split push game. And it yeah, like Echo Kyoko pushing the bottom wave, right now. but TP happens, and so he has to back off. And you can see just better map play from the early game, better war, late game. Better awareness of, you know, wake up. Mm -hmm. What's happening? He's gonna have to flash out. He does survive, but his flash is on, and this game just looks like it's almost. Yeah. I, I, I honestly do not think, think that he might have a chance so tanky on the side of the, of the, on the red side. Yeah, and just not enough damage on the blue side. Only the echo is providing any devil of threat. Good fight from the game. Oh, but oh my. Oh, so good. And he doesn't even go down. Morgana with a beautiful ultimate. Echo, but they think they're just going to clean up this fight anyway. Morgana with a beautiful ultimate and it still goes for one for I mean sorry, uh, Echo and Sidoni with beautiful ultimates and it still goes one for one because of the amazing ultimate of Ka uh, Kaizen Windsor. Finally two for one, but still crazy I, I, I play give, from Kaizen Windsor. I wanna Windsor. give Hyun Kyoma a huge credit there. His his uh whatever what what is uh, Echo's bubble called? He's going one? to get the uh Annie off of the uh yeah, off of the Luden's Echo Pond. But back but. to back back that last game fight, I wanna give huge credit to Hyun Kyoma there. His uh parallel to he really split up that fight in crazy way. Like, he did not land 
is he basically forced both sides to completely separate in a way, and they just pick them off one by one. Yep, and actually, blue side getting dragon off of that, so keeping red from getting that really important dragon four. With the 10k gold lead, I'm not really sure how much it matters, but still. I'm surprised that they won that fight at all. Uh, I think it was a 4v5 though. Somebody there, I, I don't know. I think it might have been the Aurelia who had, yeah, the Aurelia had just TP'd um, and was pushing out the bottom side, so that's why they lost that fight. So, this is, so you know, a little bit of a closing error, but I think, I think you can say that actually, like, in this game, Ghost comes down to mainly just bad, bad rotational play. Like the early game snowball, I don't feel like the early game snowball actually didn't come into effect too much because actually, like Blue Side was able to make a comeback through their split. Yeah. I think this game mostly came out of the like the world's powerful Blue Side and Red. Honestly, yeah. I think that that's that that's what UPSL comes down to. Oh, okay. I mean, possibly, but at the same time, there's there's so many fights that were taken badly, like. Team fights that shouldn't have happened, you know. Like, yes, red team does have a strong team fighting comp, but at the same time, I think blue side also is not making the most of, you know, the map control that they have. They're taking bad fights where they can force four to five. Yeah, and they're just gonna force down mid. It's the fourth one. Only the gear left against four heroes at 70k, 12k gold lead, and I think this probably will be the game. We'll see. Seven seconds on Lucian. They might be able to hold this push, but game looking pretty over. Here, Kira needs to land a four-man, a five-man parallel. Still pushing. Still pushing. Are they just gonna go for the end here? Or are they just engaging aggressively onto the Echo? Not even afraid. Just better frontline as well, yeah, like... I actually like this by Red Side. The only way that they actually lose the game here is if Hyun Kim...